Yeah. It's very embarrassing. Thank you. Lovely. Thank you. Doing well. Doing well. Thanks for reading. Good evening. Today we celebrate the solemnity of the Immaculate Conception of the Blessed Virgin Mary. Our entrance hymn is number 1020, Immaculate Mary, number 1020. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the grace and peace of God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Dear sisters and brothers, we come together this evening on the eve of Mary's great feast that celebrates the great gift that God gave to her to be conceived without the stain of sin so as to prepare her to be the mother of the Redeemer, and our mother as well, the new Eve. Let us ask her maternal prayers and love as we now celebrate the mysteries of her son, that we may know freedom from sin and freedom to serve the Lord. Let us now acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, your mighty God and Prince of Peace, Lord, have mercy. Amen. You are Son of God and Son of Mary, Christ, have mercy. Amen. You are the Word made flesh and splendor of the Father, Lord, have mercy. Amen. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us, for you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ. With the Holy Spirit and the glory of God the Father, amen. Let us pray. O God, who by the Immaculate Conception of the Blessed Virgin prepared a worthy dwelling for your Son, grant we pray that as you preserved her from every stain by virtue of the death of your Son, which you foresaw, so through her intercession, we too may be cleansed and admitted to your presence. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A 
reading from the book of Genesis. After the man, Adam, had eaten of the tree, the Lord God called to the man and asked him, where are you? He answered, I heard you in the garden, but I was afraid because I was naked, so I hid myself. Then he asked, who told you that you were naked? You have eaten then from the tree of which I had forbidden you to eat. The man replied, the woman who you put here with me, she gave me fruit from the tree, and so I ate it. The Lord God then asked the woman, why did you do such a thing? The woman answered, the serpent tricked me into it, so I ate it. Then the Lord God said to the serpent, because you have done this, you shall be banned from all the animals and from all the wild creatures. On your belly shall you crawl and dirt shall you eat all the days of your life. I will put enmity between you and the woman, and between your offspring and hers. He will strike at your head while you strike at his heel. The man called his wife Eve because she became the mother of all the living. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Marvelous deeds, 
sing to the Lord a new song, for he has done marvelous deeds. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavens, as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world to be holy and without blemish before him. In love, he destined us for adoption to himself through Jesus Christ, in accord with the favor of his will, for the praise of the glory of his grace that he granted us in the beloved. In him we were also chosen, destined in accord with the purpose of the one who accomplishes all things according to the intention of his will, so that we might exist for the praise of his glory, we who first hoped in Christ. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. All in Alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. The angel Gabriel was sent from God to a town of Galilee called Nazareth, to a virgin betrothed to a man named Joseph of the house of David, and the virgin's name was Mary. And coming to her, he said, Hail, full of grace, the Lord is with you. But she was greatly troubled at what was said and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. Then the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. Behold, you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you shall name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called Son of the Most High, and the Lord God will give him the throne of David his father, and he will rule over the house of Jacob forever and of his kingdom there will be no end. But Mary said to the angel, How can this be since I have no relations with a man? And the angel said to her in reply, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore the child to be born will be called Holy, the Son of God. And behold, Elizabeth, your relative, has also conceived a son in her old age. And this is the sixth month for her who was called barren, for nothing will be impossible for God. Mary said, Behold, I am the handmaid of the Lord. May it be done to me according to your word. Then the angel departed from her. The Gospel of the Lord. 
please be seated. I cannot think of a time in my life when I was not aware of the Mother of God. Just as I cannot remember a time when I was not aware of her son, the Lord Jesus. I think that's certain evidence that my parents, even before I could speak, told me about the Lord, told me about his mother. So that when I, as a young child, came to some consciousness and self-awareness, Jesus and Mary were as familiar to me as the furniture in our house. But there are three occasions that I'd like to share with you when that relationship with Mary, and it was a relationship, not just a, a point of doctrine, When that relationship deepened, and always, of course, it's, it's by the Lord's design. It was when I was in second grade, the year, of course, when my classmates and I were preparing for our first confession, our first Holy Communion, and the sisters tried very much to inculcate in us the proper way to behave in church that this was a special place of encounter with God through the mysteries of the sacraments, and that therefore we could not behave as we would anywhere else, that we would have to be especially attentive and devoted to, to God in our hearts. As the liturgy says, lift up your hearts. So we would go over to church often enough and we would be drilled in how to genuflect, how to enter the pew, how to bless ourselves with the holy water from the, uh, from the stoop, how to come forward for Holy Communion. In those days there was the communion rail and you, you knelt for communion how to go back to your place and kneel and, and say a prayer of thanksgiving as Jesus sacramentally was present with you as long as that host was, was in your mouth and in your stomach. So, one day, the nuns told us if you are especially good today and maybe it was a day when we were not especially good then you will get a, a little gift so I, I, I wanted to I wanted that gift probably more than I wanted to be good but I wanted the gift so I was good and what was given to me was a beautiful little statue of the Blessed Mother uh, which I still have, and which I, I, I took and um, always had a, a place of, of honor in my bedroom. That was a significant moment of, I felt the Blessed Mother letting me know how much she loved me. The second time was um, the next year, third grade. Our teacher, who was one of the very few lay people in the school at that time, um, almost every grade was taught by uh, one of the sisters. 
But her mother was very ill, some type of chronic illness, and was indeed quite sick. So our teacher asked us if we would pray for the intercession of the mother of God for the recovery of our teacher's mother. And we did it, I remember, every day, probably for a few months. And I remember feeling very happy to do it, knowing that it, it, it was just a good thing to do, to be close to Jesus' mother in this way, to ask her help. Well, lo and behold, in the middle of the spring, our teacher said, my mother has recovered. She's well now, and it looks like she'll have many more years ahead of her. And that was such a tremendous <coughs> affirmation of faith for me, the power of prayer, but also especially the, the power of the intercession of the mother of God. Third occasion, eighth grade. Our eighth grade teacher, again a religious sister, she had a great devotion to Our Lady and she taught us more of the Marian prayers. Of course, from the time that uh, we entered school, we all knew the Hail Mary. And at lunchtime, we learned the Angelus. But I was taught the Memorare. Remember, most gracious Virgin Mary, that never was it known that anyone who fled to thy protection, implored thy help, or sought thy intercession was left unaided. That's how the prayer begins. And I remember a Sister telling us this is a most powerful prayer that if there's something in your life that you find very difficult, that you find no solution to, that troubles you, then offer this prayer to the Mother of God and she will help you. And so that has indeed become my go-to prayer, <laughs> even to this day. And um, not to sound at all overly pious, because I don't mean to be pious, the prayer has always brought me great comfort and many graces because of the Mother of God. Okay, one more. One more example. So when I was preparing, uh, I was in my last year preparation for the priesthood, and I developed what you might call a uh, a really severe case of cold feet. As I approached the prospect of ordination, I began to, to really have a lot of anxiety. Was this the right thing for me to do? Could I make that kind of commitment, lifetime commitment, where you don't go back, you just, it's your whole life. Could I make that? And so I asked uh, the Archbishop, it was this Cardinal Hickey, if I could have some more time. I had already been called to ordination. He had called me to holy orders in his mind. He had no difficulty in ordaining me. It was to have been on June 29th, the Feast of Solemnity of Peter and Paul. But... Uh, I, I gave that date up, and I said, I, I need some more time. And he, uh, 
Well, you talk about a, a, a great father, which is what bishops and priests are really meant to be, good fathers. He kind of read my heart better than I could. He said, I'll give you four months. I'll assign you to a parish. Uh, do the ministries there that you can do as a deacon. And at the end of those four months, you tell me whether you want to be ordained or not. If you want to be ordained, I will ordain you. If you don't, I'll lay aside you and you can go about your business. I was thinking he'd give me more time, four months. And those four months were um, filled with anxiety, horrible anxiety. Uh, then I went to this place for my canonical retreat. Uh, every man who's to be ordained a priest must go on retreat um, before ordination. Canon law requires it. That's why it's called a canonical retreat. To this place I'd never been to before, Priestfield, which is in West Virginia. And you've seen me wear the cap for Priestfield. And it was there that the anxiety left. Just left. Never came back. <laughs> and so I said to the, uh, the archbishop, I, I want to go ahead. He said, okay, we'll schedule it. I said, well, you know, I, I have a great devotion to, to St. Paul. Could I be ordained on the, the feast of the conversion of St. Paul, which happened to fall on a Saturday that year? And Saturday was the day for ordinations. He said, no, it's not for you to choose. <laughs> so he, cho he chose this solemnity, the solemnity of the Immaculate Conception to be my ordination day. Interestingly, that year, December 8th fell on a Sunday, the second Sunday of Advent. That meant that the the feast to Mary had to be moved. You couldn't just skip over it. So it was moved that year up to December 7th. But it was still the Feast of the Immaculate Conception to everyone's great confusion. But I wanted to mention that because today is December 7th. Today is my anniversary, 36 years. And it's the Feast of the Immaculate Mother of God. There's a lot of theology that is learned explanations for what God has done with regard to Mary and why he has done it and so forth and it's quite lovely. It's beautiful, it's very fitting she is that woman that is spoken of by the Lord in the book of Genesis, right after the, the sin of our first parents. I will put enmity between you and the woman, says the Lord. And the woman's not Eve. It's this other woman whose offspring will be the one who will, that Satan will strike at his, at his heel, but he will, he will strike at Satan's head. That's Jesus. But the church's faith in Mary, in her role in salvation history, in the truth that everything that comes to us from Jesus also comes through Mary, because Jesus the Savior became incarnate of Mary, and her role was not a passive role, but a very active role. That the church has always known Mary personally and known of her immaculate holiness, known of her incomparable love, which is an absolute mirror and participation 
in Jesus' love for her and for all humanity. She is indeed full of grace, not just in the sense that God chose her to be the mother of the Savior, a task which was hardly easy, but filled with tremendous sorrows and pains because her heart was full of love. And when we see others whom we love hurting, we suffer with them and for them. The more we love them, the more we suffer. Mary was full of grace because no sin ever had even a moment's domination over her. And this is why we love her. This is why she is so beautiful and why we are drawn to her. This is why we honor her tonight. And praise God, singing a new song, because every day, every year on this feast, it's a, it's a new moment and time of grace where the mercy and love of God comes to us through and in that woman. Next year, maybe I'll have a few more stories to tell you about Mary. And you can tell me some of yours too. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. and together profess our Catholic faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come, amen. We rejoice with the Immaculate Mother of God for it is through her intercession that God has bestowed every spiritual blessing upon us. With heartfelt confidence in divine providence, we present to our Heavenly Father our needs and those of the whole world. Our response is, grant our prayer, O Lord for the church that all Christians may grow in devotion to the Immaculate Virgin Mary, who faithfully watches over her wayward children, we pray to the Lord. Grant our prayer, O Lord. For the leaders of nations, that they may govern their people with justice and genuine discernment, we pray to the Lord. Grant our prayer, O Lord. For those trapped in the downward spiral of sin, that the intercession of Our Lady may bring them hope, we pray to the Lord. Grant our prayer, O Lord. For families, that they may grow in love, holiness, and trust in God, we pray to the Lord. Grant our prayer, O Lord. For the prayer intentions of those we serve through our food pantry, for the poor, and for all who have asked for our prayers, we pray to the Lord. Grant our prayer, O Lord. 
for those preparing to receive the sacraments for faithful marriages and for an abundance of religious vocations. We pray to the Lord. Grant our prayer, O Lord. For the elderly, the terminally ill, those suffering from mental illness and addiction, and all who are sick, that the Lord will help them bear their illness in union with Jesus' obedient suffering. We pray to the Lord. Grant our prayer, O Lord. For all our beloved dead, that the Lord will welcome them to the table of God's children in heaven. We pray to the Lord. Grant our prayer, O Lord. And for the special prayers which we bring before the Lord this evening, calling upon the powerful and loving intercession of the Mother of God. We pray to the Lord. Grant our prayer, O Lord. Loving Father, you reveal your eternal goodness through the immaculate conception of your handmaid and our mother, the Blessed Virgin Mary. May we come to share in her radiant love and purity through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Pray, sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at my hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Graciously accept the saving sacrifice which we offer you, O Lord, on the solemnity of the Immaculate Conception of the Blessed Virgin Mary, and grant that as we profess her on account of your prevenient grace, to be untouched by any stain of sin, so through her intercession we may be delivered from all our faults. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. And this Mass is being offered for the repose of the soul of Luis Martirano. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation. 
always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, for you preserve the most blessed Virgin Mary from all stain of original sin, so that in her, endowed with the rich fullness of your grace, you might prepare a worthy mother for your son, and signifying the beginning of the church, his beautiful bride without spot or wrinkle. She, the most pure virgin, was to bring forth a son, the innocent Lamb of God, who would wipe away our offenses. You placed her above all others to be for your people an advocate of grace and a model of holiness. And so in company with the choirs of angels, we praise you and with joy we proclaim. indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We, we proclaim, proclaim your death, death o Lord, Lord, and profess your resurrection, resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Wilton, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, with St. Hugh of Grenoble, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen, amen, amen. 
At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins but on the faith of your church. And graciously grant our peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. And may the peace of the Lord be with you always. On you say, Qui tollis peccata mundi, miserere nobis. On you say, Qui tollis peccata mundi, Miserere nobis, Agnus Dei, qui tollis peccata mundi, Dona nobis pacem. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Glorious things are spoken of you, O Mary. For from you arose the Son of Justice, Christ our God. The body of Christ. Be glad, my soul, and glorify the Lord. The body of Christ. My spirit finds its joy in God, my Savior. The body of Christ. Be glad, my soul, and glorify the, the body of Lord. Christ. My spirit finds its joy in God, my Savior. The body of Christ. For you have the smiled upon my littleness. The body of Christ. Henceforth all people the shall call me ever the body blessed. The body of Christ. Be glad, my be soul, with me. and glorify the, the Lord. The body of Christ. My spirit finds its Christ. joy in God, my Savior. It was you, mighty Lord, the Holy One, who wrought in me the marvel of the your of power. The body of Christ. Be glad, my soul, the and glorify the Lord. The body of Christ. My spirit finds its joy in God, my Savior. To those who fear and love your holy name, from age to age you show your tender mercy. 
Let us pray. May the sacrament we have received, O Lord our God, heal in us the wounds of that fault from which in a singular way you preserve Blessed Mary in her immaculate conception. Through Christ our Lord, amen. And now let's pray together our prayer to St. Joseph, the virginal spouse of the Mother of God. Hail, guardian of the Redeemer, spouse of the Blessed Virgin Mary, to you God entrusted his only Son, in you Mary placed her trust, with you Christ became man. Blessed Joseph to us too, show yourself a father and guide us in the path of life. Obtain for us grace, mercy, and courage and defend us from every evil, amen. The Lord be with you and may almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Go forth, the mass is ended. Thanks be to God. Our final hymn is number 515. Behold a virgin bearing him, number 515. of Christ, our only hope of salvation. Thank you all for your ministry this evening. Thank you much. Thank you. Oh, thank you. 36. 36. Yeah, yeah, yeah. One year behind. I'm, 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 I'm right behind you. <laughs> very good. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Good. Thanks. Well, I tell you, good to see you, John. Happy Feast Day. I love, love you, dear. Benjamin, happy feast day. Sean, happy feast day. Thank you much. All right, Gabriel, happy feast day. Michael, happy feast day. Becky, happy feast day. Xavier, happy feast day. Simon, Brandon, happy feast day. Happy feast day. Thank you. Oh, indeed. I say it every time I drive. Yes, yes. And you've never had an accident. There you go. <laughs> Thank you so much. God bless you. Oh my, I did, oh yes, I did. That's, that's a good, that's a good bit. It doesn't, no, no.